So now, uh, everyone, please pay attention to our dear first guest lecturer, Mr. Sanjay Ghosh, sir. Mr. Sanjay Ghosh, sir, is a senior advocate in the Supreme Court and a litigation stalwart. He is a first-generation lawyer who fought all odds to rise as a name to be reckoned in advocacy. He is a 1996 NLSIU graduate and has represented the Delhi government in several important and sensitive matters, such as the fixing of the minimum wages, Delhi versus Center, the Delhi riots case, the PIL on odd even, Dengu, on purchase of law floor buses, regularization of Kashmiri Pandit school teachers, etc. Except for this, he is also such a, a very great scholar. You can find him on various books he has uh, written. I have not written we welcome you, sir, wholeheartedly, and on, on behalf of the NLU fraternity, I would like to invite you to start with your uh, precious time. Thank you so much. So, first of all, I must say that uh, Aditya is already a rock star lawyer to me. Huh? He has got all the attributes, and I'm sure all of you, many of you, have of being a good lawyer, which is what? Which is that never contradict a judge. So we say, Aditya, 6 o'clock flight, spice jet, can't we do something else? Yes, sir, you are right. And then one day later, but sir, if you come at 6, it'll be good, you'll have more time on the campus. <laughs> then, the second attribute of a good lawyer, humility. The great resource persons have come and I'm an average person. And this is what the judges want to hear, that you know the judges are so great and the lawyers are always my lord, my lording. But anyway, I, 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 you know, humor aside, reality, I must say that you people are rock stars. The reception that we have got, the love that we have got is really, really overwhelming. And uh, uh, this is such a beautiful campus and to see all of you on a Saturday morning so enthusiastic uh, and to wait for lunch till 2. Uh, I don't know whether we can speak for 2 hours, but we will, uh, uh, you, you know, it's, if you give an a lawyer a captive audience, then, uh, you know, the lawyer just keeps talking and talking, so we have to restrain ourselves. <laughs> now, uh, before I get into this, I must also compliment the faculty and, the uh, and, and all of you that this is actually a, a very, very, a very, very dangerous and seditious uh, kind of, uh, of topic. <laughs> Especially for a faculty and a, and a university to accept what they don't teach because they say we teach you everything, right? So, uh, you know, a big round of applause for the faculty to allow this. When I came here, I was thinking I will only talk about what they don't teach at law school, but this high tea that we had, I didn't have anything, but there was a high tea. Just now with your director, who was our professor, who was our professor, Sonal, my Vikram, we were his students in the National Law School. So, he didn't remind me, he, he must have forgotten. See, teachers don't remember, but the students remember, right? So, let me start with what they teach you at law school, before we go to what they don't teach you at law school. And this same Professor Nagaraj all of a sudden remembered what, what they teach you at law school. So, Professor Nagaraj designed a course called the Mediation, uh, this Conciliation and uh, alternate dispute resolution. So don't take notes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Alternate dispute resolution even before. See, we are so ancient. We were before the 1996 Arbitration Act. We passed out in 1996. Arbitration law, cell phone, nahi hua tha. internet was there by BSNL dialing. Hmm? So we are that, that old. So there was this course. And one of the things was negotiations. So imagine Professor Nagraj had such foresight to design a course on negotiation even before today people are grappling with the alternative dispute resolution as a new destination and my younger brother Anush will be telling you about this important thing tomorrow on the, how you have a career in alternative dispute resolution, especially mediation which is going to be the next big destination. Trust me, in 1992, if someone told me that the arbitration is the next big thing, we would never have contemplated, never have understood. Today, he will tell you that mediation is the next big thing and that's a career move which many of you should also consider, which they may or may not teach you in law school. So, in this course, there was an exam. Now, 
If I talk about cheating in exams with the faculty sitting here, it's bad, but what to do? Even in National Law School in those days, everyone has done cheating. How did it happen? How Professor Nagaraj had taught us that you have to negotiate, you have to, you know those catch words, enlarge the pie and all those things. So, everyone has made a team that first you say 100, then I will say 50, then you say 80, then I will say 40, then 45 will be done. Because that is, you have to play and act that whole, uh, whole uh, negotiation and Professor Nagaraj will be evaluating you ki how well you are conducting the negotiation. Some team made a team. I had a chatur reputation. No one wanted to be my team member. But he will not, he will not play ball. So I landed up with a team member with someone, I will not mention her name, who had failed four times in law school. Matlab, she says, we don't know, she says that her boyfriend was doing medical in medical college and that poor fellow was failing every year. And if she graduated before her, before he did, unka maa baap unko shadi kar dete. <laughs> so out of love she was failing every year and she was a fourth year she had failed and in my kismat mein, oh lady came. Okay? Now, humare, now, uh, now luck would have it, the first was this lady. Second was, the, the problem was, the negotiation was to be done, I was for the management, she was for the worker, it was a workman's compensation act claim. Professor Nagraj being Professor Nagraj and being our labor law teacher also, he chose all problems from labor law. So he workman compensation act. Ka my confidence, I am one of the top in the class, five-time failure, shallow. I am, I am through. So quickly I calculated and I thought compensation is coming to six lakhs. Is my calculation that yes, this injury can be scheduled for six lakhs. Ho gaya, compensation is done. Then, she came and of course, we to the local of cheating. We did it. So we sat, she sat here, I sat there. I said, yes, madam, so oh, there are points to being sympathetic. Yes, madam, we are very sad, you know, as a company, we are very sad your client was injured. Uh, but, you know, we want to end it out of court. So tell us your opening figure, that don't disclose your opening figure, get their opening figure. So she said, I want 60,000. <laughs> I said, what happened here? 6 lakhs are being made and 60,000 are being made. I can stick and say, yes, done, deal, chalo. But then, Nagraj ji betha hai, wo sab evaluate karna hai. I'm saying, I'm cheated, yeah? It's the easy victory ho gaya. World Cup match, first one minute mein sab ho gaya. I said, no, I'll let me play it out. I said, ma'am, that's so good that you're being so fair. But you know, let's think of alternative solutions. So, Nagraj, wo points tha ke alternative solutions generate karo. To mein jitna koshish kata tha us negotiation ko prolong karne ke liye, she had only one line. I want 60,000. So I looked at Professor Nagraj and I said, Well, if you want 60,000, what can I do to take 60,000? And I'm feeling so great that I'm going to do Bhangra, I'm going 6 lakh, then this 60,000 is So I looked at Professor Nagraj and said, Sir, then it is done. So Professor Nagraj looks at me and says, Have you protected your client? When he said that, I said, Boss, there is something wrong. I said, yes sir, what can I do if she wants this amount? Okay, call the next people. So I went to the But on Monday, I went to the hostel running. Workman's compensation act, go to the calculate it. And I calculated the injury was for 6,000 rupees. And I miscalculated it, 6 lakhs. 60,000 is 10 times what she actually should have got. So the first lesson in law school is don't be overconfident. They teach teach. Don't be overconfident and thoroughly read your, your law, your provisions. So now coming to what they don't teach at law school. It's already happened what they teach at law school, what we should learn at law school. Now, uh, tell me which is the most famous constitutional law case which is associated with your city. Wow! Madam, you have to take your whole life. ADM Jabalpur. Now I'm going to have some show of hands. How many of you think that the ADM Jabalpur 
What's up, man? Do, do, any guesses? Was this ADM Japolpur a man or a woman? Jinke, jinone case laya tha Supreme Court mein. Was he a man or a woman? Was he a he or a she? Any guesses? Any guesses? She now, will you be surprised if I tell you that ADM Japolpur is actually a lady? Okay? Now, what is so important about this? I'm, I'm, I'm throwing random facts at you. So why is it connected with our learning what they don't teach you at law school? So the first thing, I mean, I'm sure they may, now I must caveat this, maybe law school teaching has changed since I went to law school. But one important thing is that as law students, you see the case. What you learn after you leave law school is you see behind the case. You see who are the lawyers who appeared in the case. You see who are the judges who decided the case. You see who are the litigants in the case. So this is one thing which you normally don't focus too much in law schools as to the politics of a case. Now coming back to this ADM Jagolpur being a lady. Now let me do some plain talking. Ashutosh in the car told us that the ratio is 50% of women and 50% of men as students. Which is a very good thing. So what I'm going to say is a fact, but you have to keep this in mind when you're coming into the legal profession. This is not meant to discourage you. This is not meant to say, forget it. But it's important to know certain things, okay? We have come a long way since Cornelia Sorabji. Cornelia Sorabji was a Parsi lady who learned the law. Who learned the law, but who till late was actually not allowed to be a lawyer because the practitioner's law prohibited ladies from practicing the law. In fact, when the law was amended, finally, and women were allowed to participate, a lawyer, such a great lady lawyer as Cornelia Sorabji, could not get clients because in India, even in those days, in those chartered high courts, they preferred, you know, each of our jo bhiye hai na, ki aap local sweater ne khari loge, H&M store mein jaake khari loge. That was there even before independence. So we had all these European lawyers who were practicing as barristers in Calcutta, in, in, uh, in, in Lahore, in Bombay, in Madras, and Indian litigants would want them. Partially, of course, because many judges were also English. So they thought that English, English, banthe hai, to inke samne chalenge. And also, they were men. So Cornelia Swarabji ultimately had to give up her legal practice because she then had to do counts, what we call non-litigation practice, corporate law, etc. So she would just be writing opinions, giving legal advice, but in court she could not be a litigator. Now we have moved a lot since then. Women are being more and more accepted in the profession, but what they will not tell you in law school, but what you need to know, and especially I'm talking to the women lawyers, and I'm talking to the male lawyers because you also have to change your attitude towards women is that law still is a male dominated profession. Chalamane confess kalia. Okay? We are beneficiaries of that also. But it is to be recognized. So as women, you will face double the obstacles that a man will face. Even now, there was a time, even till 1980s, when in South Asia, in uh, you know Asma Jahangir said in the Lahore High Court, in the Bar Association, women were not allowed to enter. So there has been a lot of change since then. A lot of now we have a lot of women senior advocates, a lot of women judges. But unfortunately, still because of certain circumstances, like the women have to unfortunately bear the burden of responsibility of the family. In a marriage, the man is okay for the man to go and earn, for the woman to take care of the children. So when she has a child, she is the one who is taking the maternity leave. 
God help if the male lawyer in the family, let's say two lawyers are married, the male lawyer taking the maternity leave, no, it will be the woman who will have to take the maternity leave. Okay? So what I'm saying may sound odd and unpleasant, but that's the reality. But that has to be fought. More and more women are coming and breaking the glass ceiling. But I must tell you one thing, you know, I was at a, a few years back, I was at a, uh, at a gender studies kind of a uh, discussion with uh, Justice Ruma Pal as one of the, uh, one of the uh, people in, the, uh, in that discussion. And uh, I said, but you know ma'am, I just don't necessarily think having a woman as a judge necessarily helps the cause of women. Who was the one who gave the dissenting opinion in the Shabri Mala case? Anyone knows? <laughs> it was a woman. Right? So don't think that just because a woman is there, it will be a woman-centric approach. And she said, Shonjo, you're absolutely right. She said, I went for a, we went as Supreme Court judges to inspect this low Adalat happening in the Patiala House Court, just a few kilometers from the Supreme Court. And she talked to the litigants. And there was a lady judge sitting there and a male judge sitting there. And she asked those litigants, lady lawyers and lady litigants in domestic violence cases, that where do you, which judge would you prefer your local analysis case to go for settlement? And they all said, we want the male judge. So she said, why? She said, Mesa, well, what's strict? Now, this is also another thing which you have to keep in mind. Now, what I'm saying is not anti-woman. I'm trying to explain to you certain circumstances, and that is this. But unfortunately, because of the gender discrimination in the legal profession, often women feel that they have to ascribe to the male standard. That they have to be more man than the male lawyer or more stern than the male judge. So that also has to change. And that is where the men, the boys, that the, the, the young gentlemen who are in this, in this room will make the difference. So what we need is feminist lawyers. Whatever be your sex, whether you be a man, woman, transgender, whatever you are, you must have a feminist ideology. An ideology of equality. Feminist doesn't mean that women are superior or men are superior. Feminist means that you believe that everyone is equal. So when you change this, you are the future bar, you are the future judges. Okay, you are the future. So many, from, so many people from my law school actually became ADMs. So the next ADM Jabal Kut could be from National Law School or from DNLU. So you are the future administrators. In every place where you go, you have to take that ideology of equality with you. I'm sure they teach it in law school, but I'm giving you the reality, the uh, real touch that in the bar also you will face these difficulties at every stage. And this is changing and it has to change even more. Now, coming to uh, some of the things. Now, when we graduate, most of the time we are told you have to unlearn what you have learned in law school. Now, that is an exaggeration because whatever legal education we get is important, right? Why would we? spend five years in a law school and then forget everything. Also, certain things cannot be taught or need not be taught in the law school. So, for example, again, I'm coming back to your director, your Vice Chancellor, Professor Nanda Kumala, legal law teacher. In fact, if any of you have read my book, I actually made a chapter of that by a fictitious story of this issue. This issue. And I'm using labor law to explain this concept to you. So in the law school, you will be taught all the things. Let's take a subject of labor law. How many of you have done labor law? Show of hands. Okay, so some people have done labor law. So how many of you, how many of you have heard of section 17B of the Industrial Disputes Act? See, this is exactly what I'm saying. In law school, they will teach you what is an industry, who is a workman, what is an industrial dispute? What are the leading cases in labor law? But the most important provision for a practicing lawyer, देखो ये यौन कर रहे हैं अभी। हमने छः बजे उठा है, छः बजे तीन बजे। छः बजे तो फ्लाइट था। So 
a practicing lawyer ke liye that is not important section 17b of the industrial disputes act says that agar aapko koi award mil jate hain from lower court jo aapko job reinstate karte hain aur agar malik uske khilaf high court mein case dalte hain to jab agar high court stay dete hain to jab tak wo hearing hoga us workman ko free mein muft mein har mahine uska vetan dena hoga so as a labor law practitioner the first thing we do is 17b laga do application aur fir meter shuru ho jayenge aur jaise meter shuru ho jate hain the workman gets free salary every month the management then wants to settle bhaiya sakhi karo usko le lo naukri mein ya kuch paisa dekh ke khatam karo so this is the rathastra so in my book i i tell you the one of the stories so i was doing this was a real life thing i made it into a story also there was a jart client of mine तो उसको मैंने बोला कि सत्रह बी का आपका एप्लीकेशन डाल रहा हूं सो आई सेट ही सेट ओके एंड ही केम टू कोर्ट द डे ऑफ द हियरिंग एंड आई एम लुकिंग फॉर हिम कहा है भाई कहा है बिकॉज लेबर हाई कोर्ट में जो लेबर जज के सामने इज वेरी क्लियर यू सी वन क्राइम वेरी लाइक यू ऑल स्मार्टली ड्रेस कोट टाइ सब में वो मालिक के लोग हैं और एक फटीचर कपड़े में गंदे सलवार कमीज में वो जो बेचारे वर्कमन है तो मैं इस साइड में देख रहा हूं उस साइड में देख रहा हूं कि मेरे वो आदमी कहा गया वेर इज माई क्लाइंट आई कैन फाइंड एम एनी वेर एन आफ्टर सम टाइम आई सी ही स्टैंडिंग देयर इन द मालिक्स प्लॉट वेर इज अ सफारी सूट एंड अ गोल्ड चेन तो मैं कहा तू कर क्या दिया यार तेरे लिए अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अलाउंस के लिए आया हूं बोले सर मम्मी ने बोला है कोर्ट जा रहे हो सच धच के जाओ क्यों ना सर ऐसे बच्चे ऐसा करके तुझे कुछ नहीं मिलेगा जब बोलेगा इसको देखो ये मोटू राम को देखो सफारी सूट पहन के गोल्ड चेन पहन के आ जाए इसको क्यों पैसा दे तो अगले उसका तारीख लग गया मैंने कहा कि ऐसा नहीं चलेगा तुझे गरीब होके आना है तीन महीने बाद जब फिर उसका तारीख लगा वन थिंग इज टू तारीख 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 जो आप दामिने में देखते हो अदालत में होते हैं In fact, lawyers are paid. So I'll come to that about adjournments. That's also what they want to teach you in law school. I'm, I'm coming to that. तो जब हियरिंग आए तो हियरिंग में मैं कहा फिर से मैं देख रहा हूं कि ये कहा है ना वो गरीबों के कैंप में है ना वो आ, अमीरों के कैंप में है ये आदमी कहा गए फिर मैं देखा कि गरीबों के कैंप के भी उस साइड में अति गरीब होके एक फटीचर कपड़े में जो होली में पहनता है ना वो होली में जो होली जो ऑल कलर ये कोई शेव नहीं किया फटा कपड़ा वो खुद ऐसे अरे आप ऐसे हो मैं तो आपको पहचान है नहीं तो सर आपने तो बोलता गरीबों के आने के लिए गरीबों के आने और उसको मिल गए उस दिन उसको वेतन मिल गए सर दीज आर दस दम से इन प्रैक्टिस यू हैव टू नो सेवेंटीन बी यू हैव टू नो दीज नॉर्मल प्रोविजन ऑफ लॉ विच मे नॉट बी टॉक टू यूर लॉ स्कूल बट दैट डज मीन दैट यू पैनिक बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली you learn everything you will you will learn all in the course of time now one important thing if you can take away this and i'm sure my the esteemed panel that you've called they are also they are very successful practitioners and leaders in their field and they will also tell you the same thing and this i'm giving you free i'm not charging the the university for this gyan <laughs> if you pick up this knowledge man lo hari saal mein to na banoge lekin kuch to ban jaoge legal profession what is that they don't teach that in law school what is that you know what lawyering is about lawyering is about knowing when to keep shut what do you think normally we think ki maine bhas kar diya itna bol diya aapne dikha diya i'm so great no the most important lesson to learn in law is when to keep shut one judge of the high court told me he was a member of this committee that uh, we were doing the uh, indian law reports he was the the judge in charge of the of the committee and he was saying that you know how frustrating it is for us judges to see how it is and he gave this concrete example i'm sharing this with you there was a gang rape case gang rape case of a minor girl by two people the lawyer for the accused 
number one cross examines thoroughly the prosecutrix, the victim of rape. The prosecutrix does not say a word about accused number two. Kuch nahi bolte. Ho gaya? Cross examination ho gaya? The judge, before the judge to say anything, the lawyer for accused number two says, Janab, mujhe bhi question puchna hai. And the judge says, Vakil sahab, aap soch lo. He says, haan ji. आपने इनको तो दिया एक घंटा मुझे आ, मुझे भी प्रश्न पूछना है आई यू श्योर इज इट यस ही आस्क द रेप द रेप विक्टिम बेटी हमारे मुवक्किल तो नहीं थे उधर बोले सर वही तो मेरा हाथ पकड़ के रखा था जब पहले वाला कर रहा था मेरे साथ गलत काम सो डू यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट दिस लॉयर डेट All he had to do was right to cross examination given to accused number one, counsel for accused number two. Accused number two refuses to cross examine. Evidence closed. Then he would argue and trial that this prosecution, prosecutrix, this rape complainant has not said a word about me, about my client. Acquittal. Acquittal made it to conviction because he wanted to impress his clients. क्योंकि उसके ऊपर दबाव होगा वकील साहब दूसरे ने तो कितना बात कर दिया और आपने तो कुछ नहीं बोला एंड वी रूटीनली फेस दिस इन फैक्ट टू वीक्स बैक आई वॉज ब्रीफ आई आई द केस सक्सेसफुल इन द हाई कोर्ट अ प्रमोशन केस एंड दिस एंड द डिपार्टमेंट चैलेंज दैट इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट सो वी आर फाइल के वॉट इज द रूल In the Supreme Court, when the appeal came of the of the of the not the department, the other side, the promotion dispute, Supreme Court judge said, "Okay, we will issue notice, but we will not stay the order." Now, what is it you have to do? Now, this is where you will. This is the conflict that you will get. You are there to object. Agar if the Supreme Court is not staying the order. Which means that my client will get promotion. I will be a fool to open my mouth and say something because if I say it, Supreme Court says, "Okay, you want to say? Okay, stay." And we have seen it in court. This happening where the Supreme, Supreme, where the lawyer just jumps up and says something. Supreme Court says, "Okay, you're so excited. Okay, stay. You want to oppose notice being issued? Fine. Then we will stay it also." So when we came out, instead of thanking me that there was no stay. This client, वो मुंह लटका के बोले वकील साहब आपने तो कुछ बोला ही नहीं आपने तो कुछ बोला ही नहीं सो मे बी टू अवॉइड दिस दैट रेप लॉयर से मैं पूछ ही लेता हूं कम से कम वो तो बोलेगा आई यू नो दैट जो इट से अरे यार वो तो थ्री नॉट फोर हो रहा था मैंने बहुत मुश्किल करके टू नाइनटी नाइन थ्री हंड्रेड में लेके आ गया सो That brings us to the second, third thing that they don't teach you in law school is managing clients. Okay. Now, this is the most important thing. How will you make it in the profession? They don't teach you the legal ethics, as Sarthakam will speak to you in the next session. prohibit lawyers from advertising in india okay you can't advertise you go to america you see a tv channel wakil ka naam aa jayega phone number aa jayenge and they will say accident call me at harry 24567 they advertise like that in fact we are in this state and i always feel whenever i come to madhya pradesh i think about bhopal uh, because uh, you know in law school in national law school we i don't know but whether is replicated in your college we had a 3 month course in torts on the bhopal gas case and i don't know whether you know when the bhopal gas case the bhopal leak happened within a week of the leak happening what in america is called ambulance chasers you know why they call ambulance chasers because koi bhi engine america is a very litigious society right in some case thok the rehte hain so there are lawyers who actually stand in front of uh, hospitals इंजरी एम्बुलेंस आ रहे किसी को लेके उसको बोल 
you do you want legal help? Uh, you know, I can be a lawyer and we can do it on a contingency. You don't have to pay anything. I get, I get one tenth of what you get. So we don't even have contingency fees in India. And you can't advertise. So how do lawyers promote themselves? How do lawyers get cases? Now, what I'm sharing with you is not a prescription ki aapko aisa karna hai. But you should know what happens. And I will give a case study of a person we know. Sonal sitting here and I know, but we will not mention his name. A mediocre student from a law school. Which law school I won't tell. But since I've told you that both Sonal and I are the same law school and we know, you can guess. <laughs> but for the record, I have not told you which law school. Mushkil <laughs> say. Of course, not that other lady who's failed five times. She never failed, but graduate from there. Now, what do they South Korea, there is a university in South Korea which is in the a post box. In that post box, there is an Indian presence. You give money and you will get a South Korean university from PhD. So, what is it? They पैसा दिया उस यूनिवर्सिटी को और वेरी सुन भी रियलाइज्ड ऑन सोशल मीडिया वी आर ऑल ऑन सोशल मीडिया कि अरे यार ये तो डॉक्टर बन गया सो लेट्स से इस नेम इस एक्स मिस्टर एक्स इस बिकम डॉक्टर एक्स उसके बाद देखा कि प्रोमोशनल वीडियोस आ रहे जहां वो और उसके बीवी इंटरव्यू दे रहे � Dr. Saab to aisa hi kehte hai. Dr. Saab ban gaye ho. Woh Korea ka paisa dhe ke university se PhD karke ho Dr. Saab ban gaye. To chalo humne ye bhi maan liya. Slowly she became doctor. Hum bhi usko doctor so on so bolna shudu kar diya. The power of suggestion. This is not enough. Then, koi mujhe WhatsApp bheja. Aray yaar, ab to Oxford ka professor ban gaye. He said what? फिर पता चला कि I said what are you saying? फिर उन्होंने वीडियो हमें भेजा। वीडियो is a ceremony where this man is being awarded a professorship of Oxford। अब उसमें फरे भी क्या है? Oxford शहर नाम के एक काउंटी है in Britain, England। वहाँ कोई फर्जी कंपनी ने बना दिया एक कंपनी called Oxford Academic Union। it has nothing to do with Oxford University. It has nothing to do with law. And there is Oxford Union and you give money to that company and you will be an honorary professor of that Oxford Academic Union. And what do you write? Professor, honorary professor of law of Oxford. So, look, his CV has improved. From a student, PhD, now honorary professor of law in bracket Oxford. अब कोई कौन Oxford देखे तो हम सब घबरा जाते हैं ना? हमारा colonialism तो नहीं किया ना अभी तक। जबलपुर बोलेंगे कहाँ जबलपुर बता? Government college है DNLU. लेकिन Oxford बोलेंगे everyone will think Oxford University, right? And today he is a global international. He is a national presence. He is consulted by even the central government. कि अरे doctor साहब हमें बताओ आपका views दो. Now that is something which you will not be taught in law school of how to promote your practice and it should not be taught. <laughs> See, when we say what they don't teach you in law school doesn't mean it's all bad. Some good things that the law school are not teaching you. Okay? <laughs> now, but this is very important. There is another thing which happens. Or wo ye hai. I have known many people, family also, friends also. Legal awards, they are as rigged as filmfare awards, many of them, okay? Kya hote usme? Law firms, and I've been asking many law firms, friends from law firms, ki itne saal ho ke abhi tak clients ko samaj nahi aaya ki ye ho kya raha hai? To aapko koi approach karenge, kahenge ki bhaiya, we are considering you to be nominated as the best law firm of India. Yeah, we are considering, Anuj ko koi bolega, we are considering you to be nominated as the best lawyer under 40. Or, isko bolega, best lawyer under 46. Now, I'm not going to go to her and reveal her age. 
But every table is five lakhs, so you know you have to sponsor five tables at the award ceremony. You can bring your own guests, but five lakhs though. So like this, you a lot of people get these awards and they promote themselves. मैं तो कहता हूँ कि इससे अच्छा है कि advertisement ही सीधा कर दो. At least you know that उसमें लिखा होता है advertorial is a paid feature. You know that what is right and what is not. Because many of you may think. That that professor, associate professor is really a professor from Oxford. That doctor is a real PhD. If I'm not mistaken, Doctor Singh B also is a PhD in uh, in Sanskrit. No, any idea? Whatever. Yeah. So a doctor, we think that a doctor, eh? Who be? So that, so this is something which you have to keep in mind about how uh, you promote yourself. A lot of national law school students from Bangalore, because we were the first movers, had this concept of this school of law firms. Kete BD, you know what BD is? Ye BD name. Madhya Pradesh se BD mat bolo. Kambar ko BD. BD means business development. So like certain law firms which brief me says, sir, hume BD karna hota hai. Aap log to kitne lucky ho. I see me. I look at you. Just have to appear in a case, get your fees, and go. हमें इतना बीडी करना था भाई बीडी क्या है सर बिजनेस डेवलपमेंट बिजनेस डेवलपमेंट के लिए यू नो लाइक लीगल पेपर्स यू नो गो फॉर द इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंसेस यू नो सेल योरसेल्फ सो दिस इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट स्पेशली व्हेन यू आर अ लॉयर नाउ व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज दैट इवन इफ यू डोंट डू ऑल दिस इफ यू Lead an ethical practice, and all your guests here who have come are that, and which is why we have Aditya and I have curated and gotten the gems of our legal profession. Some very just are self-paced, they don't do social media. Me, they are very reticent people, and when you hear what they do, you will be amazed as to the kind of work they are doing and the impact they are having on people. So, what does this mean? This means that if you do ethical work. and if you do competent work there will be space for you there will be demand for you you don't have to do all these business development jo karte hai jo kat jo kat karte hai usko bhi khuda unko god bless them also but you need not do it if you feel that you are uncomfortable with doing these kind of things then don't do that okay now let's come to our judgments Do you know that even now, after 26 years in the profession, many times you are hired just to get an adjournment? In fact, day before yesterday, a judge of the High Court pointed out a finger to me and said, "Don't record all this, sir. I'll be in trouble." So no, it was 4:30. Now, if all day we are sitting here, the judges for you, listen, madam, you are listening. All day we are sitting. एक केस के लिए द जज इज हियरिंग वन केस फॉर द होल डे अब ब्रीफिंग काउंसिल का भी फीस होगा सीनियर का भी फीस होगा क्या करें हम तो कुछ बोला नहीं करा नहीं तो जूनियर काउंसिल बोलते हैं कि सर आप कुछ तो बोलो जज को मैं आई हैव टू शो माय फेस टू माय लॉयर माय माय क्लाइंट तो मैंने बोला कि माय लॉयर इन दिस मैटर चार बजे साढ़े चार बजे जज रिटायर होके वॉज गेटिंग आउट आई Said my lord, in this matter, I need some time to file a reply. He said, Mr. Ghosh, you have come to ask for reply. Go and have tea in the canteen. <laughs> so, even now, you are actually, as a senior lawyer, many lawyers are actually engaged or told that you know it is not bad if we get another date. and unfortunately jitna bhi aapke professors will teach you the amendments to the cpc all these laws which require time bound hearing our legal system is very very adjournment conducive in fact i've talked about this example as a real life example of this gentleman who practices in the labor court in delhi 
Many of you may have heard me on social media talking about this example, where this gentleman, he was known as an adjournment king and he used to be very happy. I used to tell him, sir, after adjournment king, oh, he said, ah, yeah. <laughs> adjournment king. So one day, and the judges also knew. That's another thing which they will not teach you in law school is that lawyers are obsessed about judges. Judges are always talking about lawyers in their own private meetings. They talk about ye lawyer aisa hai, ye lawyer aisa hai. Judges, uh, lawyers in their parties will be only talking about ye judge ne aisa bola, ye judge ne aisa bola. So you are enjoying the space now where you don't talk about lawyers and judges, you're talking about yourselves. So enjoy the five years that you have in law school. This is the best time that you'll have. Take it from me. So anyway, coming back to this, this gentleman. So, जज भी पता था कि ये तो अजर्मन किंग है ये बदमाश हर के, हर केस में अजर्मन लेके चले जाते हैं इस बात को मैं रुकूंगा उनको रुकूंगा उसको सो ही सेड माय लॉर्ड माय ग्रैंडफादर हैज डाइड माय ग्रैंडमदर हैज डाइड और समथिंग लाइक दैट ही सेड माय ग्रैंडमदर हैज सो द जज सेड हां मिस्टर सो एंड सो इस बात को आपको पकड़ लिया साहब आपने भूल गए कि दो हियरिंग पहले आपने ये ग्राउंड से अजर्मन लिए थे वकील साहब विदाउट बैटिंग एंड आई लिव दिस जेंटलमैन से माय लॉर्ड इज इट माय फॉल्ट इफ माय ग्रैंड फादर इज मैरिड ट्वाइस सो अजर्मन हमारे कोर्स में तो फाइल काउंटर इन फाइल रिप्लाई इन थ्री वीक्स थ्री वीक हो गए डेट आ गए बोला माई लॉर्ड आई नीड मोर टाइम ओके लास्ट अपॉर्चुनिटी अनादर थ्री वीक्स लास्ट अपॉर्चुनिटी और थ्री वीक्स हो गया माई लॉर्ड वी वी गॉट इट बट देर वॉज दिस दिस ओके फाइनल अपॉर्चुनिटी तो लास्ट के बाद फाइनल आ गए अनादर थ्री वीक्स हो गया आई एम सेंग थ्री वीक्स इज एक्चुअली थ्री मंथस केस इज गॉन फॉर मंथ फिर फाइनल अपॉर्चुनिटी नो फर्दर अजमेंट शाल बी ग्रांटेड तो देखो चार ऐसा हेयर तो अजमेंट ही चलेगा सो दिस इज नॉट समथिंग विच यू आर नॉट टॉट इन लॉ स्कूल बट दिस इज समथिंग विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ लीगल सिस्टम एंड एज यंग लॉयर्स एंड समटाइम एज ओल्ड लॉयर्स यू विल बी एक्सपेक्टेड टू डू दैट as junior lawyers when you join the legal profession if you join the litigation as opposed to corporate and all that difference but if you join litigation you will be expected by your senior pehle din to jaake aap adm jambal pur ya keshwanand bharti aake dikh karoge na so your first assignment which are date leke aap tarikh leke aap sir tarikh leke aap and if you are i one junior who is very conscious ki mera image kharab nahi hona chahiye that is a luxury which you can't afford as young lawyers you are going it's a law is a very public process okay it's a public process your humiliation is public your adulation is public if you want the public adulation you have to be ready for the public humiliation also okay so you and the other thing is you have to bear the brunt of your senior senior ne bola hai jaise bhi ho tumhe adjustment leke aana leke aana एक ने तो अपना फेक शादी बना दिया माइलॉर्ड आई एम गेटिंग मैरिड बस उसी पे जब जर्मन नहीं मिला था माइलॉर्ड आई एम गेटिंग मनी मैरिड तो जज ने बोल दिया ओके ऑल द बेस्ट एंड ऑर्डर में भी लिख दिया विशिंग द न्यू कपल ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर देयर मैरिड लाइफ हां फॉर द गुड थिंग ऑफ लिटिगेशन इज दैट वी हैव सो मेनी हॉलिडेज वी बीट स्कूल्स आल्सो स्कूल में जितना छुट्टियां है लिटिगेशन उससे डबल और कभी कभार तो हम दिल्ली में जैसे भी एड लोकल हॉलीडेज मतलब मान लो कि ट्यूसडे वेडनेसडे छुट्टी है कोई मंडे काम क्यों करेगा मंडे लोकल हॉलीडे सो संडे सैटरडे संडे मंडे ट्यूसडे वेडनेसडे छुट्टी होगी सो द फर्स्ट थिंग विच यू डोंट सी बट एज लॉयर्स द फर्स्ट थिंग वी सी अरे कैलेंडर देखो कितने छुट्टी है पहले से ईयर में प्लान कर लो कि हम हॉलीडेज में क्या करेंगे so this a german culture is something the 101 reasons i'm thinking of writing a book called 101 ways to get a german it will be a best seller <laughs> if you can think of some creative uh, ideas send to me i will give a uh, i will have a competition hmm and acknowledgement and gift so now we come to uh, this uh, what i'll actually assign to speak on 
and uh, I'm going to wrap up my session in the next 10-15 minutes and then we can have an open house where we can have a discussion. You know, I want to go, it's been made in a lecture form. I would rather hear your voices and answer your questions. Okay, rather than being a monologue where I'm talking. Feel free, we could ask anything you want. Okay, but I'll wrap up in the next 10 minutes. Give me 10-15 10, 10, minutes more and then we'll have an open house. We can break for early lunch also. I don't know, depending on. I'm man is very excited and also early lunch. Uh, now what I have been given uh, to talk about, I have been as usual talking all here and there, but not talking my topic. My topic is the role of other. Other disciplines. Ah, other disciplines. <laughs> now, this is very important. As a lawyer, if you're going to only do law, 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 and law, believe me, you're doing disservice to yourself, you're doing disservice to law. Because the real great, the real great judges and the real great lawyers are inspired by many other things other than law. In fact, a judge who has a big fan club, though I am not a fan of this judge, uh, Justice Rowington Nariman, he is an absolute jazz uh, uh, aficionado. He loves jazz music. He loves uh, 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 theology. He, he was himself a Dastur, a certified Parsi priest. He's written such amazing books on Zoroastrian uh, culture. And he can, he's given so many lectures on even Hindu uh, and uh, Islamic uh, theology. Brilliant lectures on heaven, earth, ye, wo. Now, how, this, how is that possible? That's only possible if you have other interests. Okay. Chief Justice. Sorry. The Chief Justice. Yes, the Chief Justice. Which I, I'm a, a big fan of this. Chief, I'm not a fan of this Chief Justice either. But I'm a big fan of the Chief Justice's son, who's written brilliant books on the Bombay High Court, uh, Abhinav Chandrachur. So it is important for you to read other stuff. <coughs> it can also be fiction about law. So I had. So we had Professor Jay Palani. I'm calling him Professor Jade Parani, he's Ram Jade Parani, the lawyer, but for us in National Law School, he was Professor Jade Parani. And he came uh, to teach us evidence. And Joga Rao was our uh, uh, criminal law teacher, an evidence teacher. And he said, Joga, have you taught them the Bhagavad Sanyasi's case? He said, No, sir, we haven't taught Bhagavad Sanyasi's Good Lord, you haven't taught them the Bhagavad Sanyasi's case. How many of you heard the Sanyasi, about the Bhagavad Sanyasi's case? How many of you heard? How many of you have done evidence law? Law of evidence, have you done? Yes. But you have to, now I am looking at the professors, which is what? <laughs> okay. The most important case in law of evidence, in criminal law, in civil law, is the Bhabal Sanyasi's case. It was the trial of the century, the longest civil trial in British India. <coughs> It was from the princely state of estate of Bhaval, the and there were three Kumars, the Zamindars, the largest Zamindari in 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 Pool of Bengal, and the, they were all debauched, like all Zamindars, Daru, women, everything, and this Zamindar had a illness, colic pain, so he went to Darjeeling with his wife and his, his doctor and his brother-in-law. When the version changes, when the versions happen, it is said that he died, there was a funeral, and ultimately the wife comes back. But what happens is, few years later, this sannyasi shows up in Dhaka, who claims that he is the Bhabal prince. He says that that day when the cremation happened, he was taken on a cremation, but there was rain. So because there was rain, they left the body and ran away for shelter. When a group of Naga sadhus came and found this corpse, and they found that he was actually not dead. So they took him with him, with them to the cave. They used their secret treatments and they brought him back to life. But he lost his memory. He didn't know who he was. So for 12 years, he moved around with his Aghori Nagas half naked or full naked in the Himalayas doing everything and slowly slowly his memory came 
And when his memory came, he realized he is the Bhagavad Sanyasi. And he came to claim his estate. And then there was the bitterest fight between the two. The Sanyasi and the wife, Vibhavati, who said that he is my husband. Nahi. So the whole trial was about identity. The whole trial was about evidence. Whole trial was about. So you had evidence of the meteorological export of Darjeeling. Why? Any idea why? Why would the meteorologist of Darjeeling be examined as a witness? Why? Any idea? You tell me. Rain. Did it actually rain that day? Two people were called from the sanitarium. Ki are Bhaval Sanyasi, Bhaval Kumar is dead. We need people to come to take the body to the cremation. So the issue was, is this evidence direct evidence or hearsay evidence? Because you had to establish actually where were there two, were there actually a morning cremation or an after, uh, evening cremation? What, who knew at what time he died? Some say he, the body was taken in the evening, some say the body was taken the next morning. Because the story was, with Bhaval, Bhaval made was, when they found that the body was missing, they staged a fake funeral the next morning. With, with not a dead body but some boat and they cremated the next morning but actually the body had been taken the, that previous evening to the cremation ground and this long trial went all over the uh, uh, it was reported in the press all over the country and ultimately the the district judge found that he is the Bhaval Sanyasi then that went to the high court in appeal and there were three judges and there also there is so much of uh, history in this that after hearing this long case in appeal, one, and this is again the history why we have long vacations. Because in those days, the judges would go to England during the vacation because they could take the Indian heat. So one of the judges, Justice Costello, went to England and the war broke out. So then the issue was how would the final verdict be pronounced? And the final verdict ultimately came, his verdict was sent back. And then he also held that yes, by two by one that yes this is a Bhaval Sanyasi is the actual Bhaval Kumar that went to the Privy Council and the objection was taken that can you now it's now sounding more like law school but I'm just explaining the case so that you understand how riveting this case is in the Privy Council what was argued was that this is not an effective judgment because the third judge was sitting in London he could not have dis discussed and deliberated with the two Indian judges so this verdict is wrong and ultimately, Privy Council also held that Vibhavati is the wife of this man, and this man is this man is the is the Nawab of, is the is the Raja of Bhaval. And again, see the see the, the the theatrics of this case. That the day he heard that he has won and he is, is he is the Bhaval Sanyasi is the is the Bhaval king. He went to the Thanthaniya Kalibari in North North Calcutta to give puja to Ma Kali. And as he gave puja and he was coming back, within few minutes of leaving the temple, he had a massive heart attack and he died. So Vibhavati did not have to live with a person who he, she said is not my husband. And in all fairness, Vibhavati, and you won't find litigants like that now, she refused to accept his estate. Because she said that now if I accept the estate as a widow, then I am accepting that this man was my husband, but he is not my husband. So this is such an important case, which has so much of history, which has so much of other things, so much of politics, is what you have to learn, which may not be, may, may not be taught in law school. It's very easy for me to come in a six o'clock spice jet flight and look at your teachers and say, they don't have but that's not true. They have to deal with their syllabus. They can't teach everything. And you can't depend on them to teach you everything. You have to develop your own interest. So remember this, so Ram Chitpalani told us you must read about the Bhaval Sanyasi's case and the other thing he said is you must read about the trial of Oscar Wilde, the brilliant trial of Oscar Wilde, where you, you know, we don't have time for that, but Oscar Wilde, there were repeated trials. The first trial was a trial of defamation which he bought against uh, the, uh, the Marquis of Queensbury, who was his lover's father, Bozi's uh, Bozi father. He lost that trial. And then the father, the father in law, I'm saying whatever, his, his partner's father then prosecuted him and the crown prosecuted him for sodomy because in those days it was a crime. So that cross examination is riveting. And it's all available in the public domain. Huh? He's mentioned, correct? Yeah. Professor is right. So please read, please inculcate an interest. In fact, I was, and I'm, I'm telling you how this knowledge will come of use to you. 
Last week I was doing a case where this party had filed this section 9 petition under the Arbitration Act for an interim relief to restrain a ship sailing from Gujarat to Dubai in the Delhi High Court. So I was appearing for the other party saying you can't give this relief. And I told the judge that my lord the only High Court which is landlocked and has exercised admiralty jurisdiction till now has been Patna High Court. And now, who said yes? Do you know why? As you said, do you know why Patna High Court, which is a landlocked High Court, had admiralty jurisdiction? It doesn't have any sea. Why did why did it have admiralty jurisdiction? Any idea, any guesses? Professor knows, but, but any, any of you can guess? See, that is why you must read history and legal history. The Patna High Court is a successor of the Calcutta High Court. So when the province of Bengal was partitioned and Bihar and Odisha were separated from Bengal, the jurisdiction of the Calcutta High Court was carved and given to the Patna High Court, which was the High Court for Odisha and Bihar. Odisha and Bihar were one province at that time. So that admiralty jurisdiction went to them. No one knew about it until one smart aleck actually went and filed an admiralty case and got, a stay, uh, got an arrest order of a ship sitting in Patna High Court. So the judge was very impressed to know about this fact, this tidbit. Now, this tidbit you will know if you inculcate that interest to go beyond your brief, beyond what is the syllabus, to know about other things. Okay? Now, coming quickly, wrapping up, I said I would wrap up, but I didn't wrap up as usual. Uh, yes, I just have two talking points left in my talking points which I have made. And that is, I recently hired two or three uh, lawyers, young lawyers. And I can tell you the interview process was grueling. Not for them, for me. Because they were interviewing me. How much money will I get? What are my prospects in this office? What are the work hours in this office? Today, the whole thing has changed. When we, in 1990s, were getting jobs, our focus was, I want to work with this lawyer. I want, of course, it's very expectation here, I, I understand. Many people work with, I, there was a lawyer who used to work with Harish Salvi for free in 97, and I used to always wonder, Ki, why is he doing that? Of course, his father was also a senior lawyer at the Bombay High Court. And that is also part of this hierarchic nature of the bar where all these rich people's kids can do better than people who actually have to pay off their college loan. I understand that. But we have gone from one pendulum, we've come to the other. Woh bhi expectation hai ki buf pe kaam karao ya paas hazar rupiah pe kaam karao. Ye bhi, ye bhi now we are, uh, the young lawyers are seeing, seeing the legal profession as a job. It is not a job. If you see it as a job, you are failing yourself. You don't understand the power that you wield as a lawyer and one day when you are designated as a senior law advocate, the, the immense moral responsibility and power that you wield, the influence that you wield as a senior advocate. And that is something which only you will get because you are going to be lawyers. Believe me, and if you view this as a, as, as a job, I don't know whether they're teaching the student law school, I'm teaching you, don't do that. Ultimately, you must have patience. I worked, of course, I am not the example to follow. I am a goner. It was five years before I actually opened my mouth in court. I was my senior's junior for five years from behind the scene. Today, a young lawyer within three months wants to have his own practice or her own cl cl clients wants to argue herself, <coughs> which is very good. It's a cutthroat thing. Today, law school, as one, as Justice Nazir said in court, the Supreme Court the other day, we were having a case before him of these uh, poor workers who have been working in the institute for 20 years and then they are not being regularized and they are saying, the exam is out. So, just as Nazim said, today we are the Supreme Court judges saying, Learned counsel, if we sit in CLAT exam, we will fail. So, I understand it is very competitive now. You are paying a lot of fees also. But don't expect the return immediately. Have patience. And believe me, it will pay off. There is a lot of space for every one of you. Each one of you. 
So have patience. And the last thing I want to tell you, and this is very important, and then we can be open to questions. This is the most important lesson which will not be taught to you in law school and which is very important for you to know. Stop. These two words are very important. Note it down. Even the person in the last row who is getting restless, who is talking to a friend over there. Yes, you. Note these two words down. These two words are don't come. Such me note kare ya, choke kar raha Such me note kare. Good boy. You must give him one mark extra for being good. Don't compare. Don't compare with your fellow students, your juniors, your seniors. So a senior, for example, today, and today, uh, I think Gautam knows better because he briefs on these top seniors, I don't. Today, I think in one case, let's say Mr. Lodhgi is charging 25 lakhs. Am I accurate? Per appearance. Per appearance, 25 lakhs. Some seniors are charging three and a half lakhs. I know a, a, a national law school graduate, a senior of mine, who's charging three lakh thirty thousand per case, and in a day he has an average twelve cases. In a day he has twelve cases. Multiply three and a half lakhs by twelve per day. So it's mind-boggling. But juniors are getting in the range of 25,000 to 30,000 a month. Okay? Now, if you don't come from a rich family, if you don't have a huge palatial house like some people have in Delhi, <laughs> if you are a poor person like me coming to a big city, what do you do? Can you get, can you rent a house or a PG, pay for your auto, pay for your cell phone, Mobile charges, kuch to hoga, 300 rupiah, 200 rupiah, kuch to hoga. Pay for your food, pay for your dhobi. At times you need to buy medicine, do something. 25,000 mein kaise hota hai? It's just a challenge. So you are right. It is easy for me to lecture and give you a you know, rosy picture that haa, aisa, aisa hai. But if you are determined, Satya Kaam who will speak to you today and why, this is why I have asked him to come and speak to you. I don't want to, to anticipate what he will speak, but he will tell you the difficulty he had as a senior lawyer, as a junior lawyer of the senior counsel. He's worked for the first four or five months of his life without receiving any money. But then when the senior when the senior was convinced of his dedication, sky was the limit for him. So how you deal with the fear, I don't know, but you have to be brave. It's easy for me to say, but for diffi it's difficult for tier two people, for people with not no connection with judges and senior lawyers, people who don't come from top top NLUs who you know who are recruited in campus recruitment. It is difficult. And let me also admit, now that you have so many national law schools, now that every state has two NLUs like you have in Andhra Pradesh, and with the pandemic, it is a challenge. It is a challenge. Not everybody is a Salve or the Rodhgi or the examples I'm giving. Not everybody is earning three and a half lakhs or two and a half, lakhs, twenty-five lakhs in appearance. It is a challenge, and unfortunately, we don't have the safety net. Like we joke that the lawyers are like daily wages. Din naano, din khao. A junior lawyer is removed from service. Uska koi chutni muhabza nahi milenge. Unke liye koi PF nahi hai. Unke liye koi unemployment dole nahi hai. Kuch nahi. It is a challenge, but it's up to you. It's up to you. I, I'm sorry, I want to add to that. So I am encouraging a lot of young students who are coming from tier 2 cities that don't come to the cities. You are graduating from NLU, go to Indore, practice in Bhopal, practice in Jabalpur, practice in Patiala and you will be, and I'm sorry to say this, Andho Me Kana Raja. Everyone doesn't have to rush to the big city. I know it, I will say condescending, you have to go away, you have to go away, now you are telling others don't come, but honestly, honestly this is, a, this is, please think about it, Every, everyone doesn't have to come to the big city, yes. So, you said, you said, you said, many of us are here, first generation lawyers, and then this very problem comes up that, if you are first generation lawyer, in your own city, you don't have that sort of condition, especially in food, and while it will early there, we have learned from there that people are not willing to accept you there. 
because they fear that our business will be taken over by criminals in that sense. So that sort of fear is there. So they are not able to accept it. In national law school, especially I am talking about uh, the trial books. The learnings which we are getting here is totally different what is going on in trial books. So it's really become tough for us to go through all those uh, scrutiny, all those stuff we go day to day or day to day basis. So how do we do that? See, one, one is that you're absolutely right. But I just want to share something with your faculty and with you so that you also can uh, request the faculty. I was at a guest lecture on constitution near the Lloyd's College. And I was very impressed to see what they are doing. They have started this clinic where they actually are replicating real life litigation. Okay? Now, what does real life litigation mean? Means they are like you have in normal court, plaint, written statement, rejoinder, a replication, then evidence, framing of issues, evidence, cross-examination, final arguments. So they are doing the whole thing over six months. And they are play-acting as well as the pleadings are being done. So this is very important that when you do these, when you do these trial court assignments, come back and you should encourage, if you don't, if you have it, I don't know, do you have it already? If you don't, you may talk to Professor Nagraj and the faculty to start the similar kind of Lloyd's experiment here also, where you set up the clinic and you replicate this real, real life case, so that you get a training on how to do this even before you join law school, leave, leave law school. That's one. Secondly, coming to this, yes, of course, one of the reasons why I didn't want to practice in Calcutta is because a, in Calcutta, no one was willing to pay more than 400 rupees. And I was very clear that having spent my parents' money for five years in law school, I was not going to be dependent on them thereafter. And the other thing was, if I practice in Calcutta, half the case would be my uncles and aunties and my parents' friends would not pay me anything. So I understand that. I understand that. But still, I believe that when I graduated in '96 till now, there's a sea difference, and the the tier two cities have also opened up. And they are also flourishing and prospering. So it's not like that, that only uh, uh, there will be these people who will resist. You will have to make yourself useful to them. The, the, what you are saying, let me tell you, is again because you are so excited to start up on your own. Go to that tier 2 city, identify who is the don of that bar, become his junior. Work for three years with him. And then come and talk to me. And then you will see the difference. The problem is you want to start on day one. Don't do that. Yes. Name and class. Sir, after the set up from 40. Sir, in trial courts, we can mention from 40. See, what we are not hearing in the medium of the teaching is English. What we see in the trial courts is the vertical language. For example, in AP, the AP is Hindi. The legal MP is very tough. So, how can we deal with that? Well, that is that is something which uh, I understand. But sir, uh, sir still struggles with Hindi. Uh -huh. <laughs> 26 years in Delhi, even even now my Hindi is. So, I must tell you the story. So, I used to actually I actually think in English, then trans translate that into Bengali, and then I remove the rasgulla from that. <laughs> As a result, I am considered a great Hindi speaker. I will give you an example. So, when I first came in 1997, there was a power failure. So, I said, oh God, I thought in my mind, oh God, there is so much darkness. So, why is there so much darkness? So, I translated that to Bengali. I asked my office staff, Manohar. So, in Bengali it is, Ato Andhoka Kadi. अब अंधकार से मैंने रसगुल्ला निकाल दिया अंधकार हो गया तो ऐसे मनोहर का अंधकार क्यों है and and this 97 हाँ he said sir आप तो वाजपाई जी से से हिंदी बोलते हो कभी तो because I didn't know in Hindi it is अंधेरा so I said अंधकार but actually I was I had taken out the रसगुल्ला from अंधकार and made it अंधकार but on a serious note you see how the IS officers work the IS officers in every state so if you are a Tamilian or a Malayali becomes a, gets assigned the Madhya Pradesh cadre, he or she has to learn the local language. So similarly, you will have to make and the same thing as a judiciary examiner if you want to be judges. And that's another problem I see. 
Why the high courts are resisting a common judicial exam, I don't understand. My junior became a judge. He went from state to state to give state exams. So when he had to go and give a state exam in, in, in Bengal, there was a paper in Bengali. In Gujarat, there was a paper in Gujarati. So I understand these are issues, but then you will have to deal with it. In the lower court, often you have to uh, uh, speak in a language which you are not taught. In fact, in uh, your Hindi, uh, in MP, it is different from Delhi. In Delhi, the local the local courts follow what is called Farsi. So we have a lot of terms like Almat, Dast, uh, Dasti, Dasti, Dast means hand. So Dasti is hand, order by hand, Dasti service. So uh, uh, so you have all these Farde Bayan. So you have all these terms which are actually not even Hindi, they are Farsi. But yeah, it is a problem. It is a problem. Especially when your education is in English more, but let me assure you, so far as High Court and Supreme Court are concerned, those of you who are educated in an English medium are definitely at a greater advantage than those people who are disadvantaged and have to learn in their mother tongue or in Hindi. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, now you are. Sir, I'm looking for so as you talk about the connection with the uh, like the dawn, the bar, or the connection with judges, so I would like to uh, um, uh, ask you about a question regarding uh, the appointment of judges. Mother, how do we get into that? Like uh, as we seen in 1979, Chief Justice of India, Deva Chandrachu, appointed uh, Justice B. N. Kripal as a Supreme Court judge. In 2000, Justice B. N. Kripal recommended Deva Chandrachu as a Supreme Court judge. <coughs> Now, recently, uh, it, it's been a news, I don't know if it's been a uh, or not, but D.Y. Chandrachu recommended Mr. Saurabh Kripal as a Supreme Court judge. So, well, how do we get into that loop that, okay, well, someone is appointing his friend, then his friend is appointing his son. So, well, how do I, how do I, as a first generation lawyer, can get into that loop that, okay, I can get with people of high tables? Son in law. You want to be a judge? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll answer your question. आप तो बेटे का बात कर रहे हो तो पोता तक सोच लेते हैं <laughs> क्या बात कर रहे हो आप I will appoint him he will appoint my son he will appoint my son my son will appoint his son his son will appoint this person it is it is it is correct what you the your criticism your criticism that uh, there is this kind of nepotism in a judicial appointment is absolutely correct and in fact there is studies to, to show that there is so many related related parties as in son, brother. Sir, I have given him a shortcut, sir. Kya hai? Son in law. Beko. <laughs> you, have, you have experience in that? <laughs> Not exactly, but yeah. So, so yes, I, so it is a sad situation. So today we, we have two failed, two, we have two uh, imperfect models. We have the NJAC model, but we know that even without the NJAC model, there is so much of executive interference in appointment of judges that if now we legitimize it, God help us, what kind of judges we will get. At the same time, we have a collegial model which is not transparent, which is completely, uh, it's like a secret cult, it's like a, it's like a frat boy uh, society where you are allowed in the Gama Delta house, how you decide what secret ritual you do. And when they even did this farce of, of transparency, it was ridiculous. It just said, we have met and we think he is unfit, we think he is fit without giving any reasons. No, but they wanted to make it, well, uh, they wanted to make it uh, public. That's how, uh, uh, you, you, you do know this. Interestingly, there was a fight between uh, Justice uh, uh, Chalameshwar and Justice Deepak Kamishra. Uh, Chalameshwar, who was the, uh, the vetoing judge in the NJAC case, said, I will not participate in collegium until, unless you make it transparent. So Deepak Pesha said, okay, transparent. But now, and then we saw what that transparency was absolute farce. But then again, at one conference, I heard Justice Kurian Joseph saying, and he also had a point. He said that, if we have reasons, this is not a hearing. So, if you think about Gautam Narayan ka ya, uh, Sonal Bhattu ka judgeship, ka baat ho rahe, or usme reason bol de rahe, Sonal is this or, or Gautam is that, then they are, their career is affected. All throughout it will be there in public domain that this is the reason given when she has not even been heard. So that also is there. So how do you deal with this? One is we go for the US system. You know how the US system, 
that appointees grill in the Senate the Judiciary Committee in the confirmation hearings, they grill that appointee. Unka pura sab nikal lete hai, chakhe, ki, as in college, he had gone to a frat party and drank and he had misbehaved with this so-and-so person. Wo bhi unka cross-examination mein aajate hai, examination mein aajate hai. So, that, so, we have to find the correct model. Now, to, to find an answer for you, I'm hoping by the time you become eligible to be a judge, we would have not failed the system by this war between the executive and the judiciary and both of them for the sake of a better country and a better judiciary would have sorted their house together. I mean, in order. Sir, sir I was given opportunity to be vote of thanks but the level of interaction you are putting sir, has bubbled some question in my mind. So adding to what Ashutosh, my friend, has said ki, that there is difficulties in law school that law school teaches in English medium and in the, most of the district courts and in most, most of the states, they prefer local language. So sir, from this I have two questions. Whether to practice in a district court from your own city and excel in that area or to go to a high court or nearer bench. Sir, if we go to high court in, uh, while practicing, that, so why not Delhi or a uh, big city? Agar jana hi hai, bade shahar mein kyun hai? Or agar karna hai practice, to district court mein kyun hai? Shahrukh Khan has been in Delhi and then he went to Bombay and became a superstar and King Khan. But how many of Shahrukh Khan came to the station of Chattrapati Shrivaji station and then he came to the side and then he came to the side. That is also there. So it's the same thing with our profession. Everyone will come but how many will become Hadi Salve? How many will go abroad? Will marry a Spanish lady? What will come abroad? But your point is there. Now, this is another thing which I want to say. And our professor in our very last course in law school said that. He asked, what, what, what will you specialize in? Some said, I will be intellectual property leader, property lawyer, I will be this, I will be that, I will be criminal lawyer. And he said, you fools. He said, you are fools. You think you will do this? You will do exactly for which your client engages you. Like, I became a labor, labor lawyer completely by accident. I was branching out. And at that time, there was one labor lawyer in the high court who wanted someone to take over his practice. And then overnight, I was doing 20 labor cases a day in the high court. And the high court, just just judge ke paas hi labor roster aate the, shuba se saam tak wo mera chhara dikte the, wo tag lag gaya labor lawyer. So for you also, it will be your destiny. Trust me, of course. Destiny, you can't leave anything to destiny. You will have to make a choice of a city. You will have to make a choice of a chamber. You will have to make a choice of a forum. But nowadays, youngsters are also brave enough to change the choice also, no? So, try it out. I would recommend to everyone that when you do your placements, do your first placement in a district court, second placement in, a, in the state, third placement in, in the Supreme Court. One in an NGO. And one in an NGO. I, I think first with an NGO. First should be with an NGO, then with the district court, then with the state high court, and then with the supreme court. So you get a feel of all. Thank you so much for correcting this. And in fact, I also had an NGO. I, I did an NGO uh, internship and I was in that school. It's very important for you to get a mix experience of all of that. And then get, get your own idea of where you want to focus. And today we have the mobility, right? We have the mobility. So uh, in fact, when I was hiring this, or rather when I was going through this, cross-examination process, there were two people from Jabalpur who applied to my chamber. And they said, I'm willing to move from Jabalpur and uh, I want to join your chamber. And you, who is yawning, do you know why I didn't hire him? You want to know? Because I said, what salary do you want? He said, 20,000. So I said, you want to leave Jabalpur and come all the way to Delhi and you'll, and you'll work in 20,000? He said, yes, sir. <coughs> I wanted to hire him then, he then found some other job. But the point is that it's so sad that today we are willing to give a security guard 20, 18,000, 20,000 rupees and a person who, this gentleman is a Malayali from, uh, from Jabalpur, who is a pass out of a national institution, who has worked for four years in Jabalpur. Because he wants to come to Delhi, he's willing to work for 20,000, what do you say? Is it not exploitation? Yes. Baba, yes, I'm very happy. Why am I not hearing women voices?
log cited in the paper of the name. But as we all know that the law makers are essentially men or predominantly men. So they unknowingly or knowingly might want to perpetrate the patriarchy. And that kind of gives reasoning to the fact that we use maternity benefits as an example. But we still don't have legislations for paternity benefits. Since uh, such is the case, the status quo that we have reinforces the belief that caregiving is the responsibility of women and not men. So in such a scenario, in such a narrative, are we not stuck in a loop and how will the system change and will the system does not change? That's a fundamental question you should be asking you should be asking our legislators that when the Rajya Sabha in 2013 has passed the Women's Reservation Bill Act Bill, why is the Lok Sabha still sitting on the bill? That's a big question. That is, it's, uh, it is too bhari harkam a question just before lunch. You need a separate session and I hope, and I'm not stereotyping because the only woman in our panel is Sonal and therefore all gender related questions Sonal will answer. It's not a stereotype, let me tell you, because I also worked on, uh, I, I was working with the women's NGO for a long time and I still consider myself uh, a feminist and associated with the women's movement. But Sonal will be speaking to you and these are the issues exactly which she will address of how she daily battles patriarchy. She, and I'm not trying to anticipate what Sonal will say, Sonal is a consultant for one of the top many of the top companies in India who consult her on formulating policies on sexual harassment and workplace harassment and she conducts these hearings and she is a direct victim of having to deal with uh, the backlash of patriarchy when she has uh, participated in very high profile uh, sexual harassment inquiries. I hope we'll talk about that, that as a case study, the one which I'm not mentioning now. We have, and you must, I, I want a big round of applause for Aditya. We have got for you a very, very serious lot of speakers. Okay? My session was only faff and trying to get you all cheered up. The real substance will start after this. Okay? So, I, I, this kind of energy I want to see for each of these sessions in the next today and tomorrow. You must promise me that. And you will not be disappointed. They are each going to blow your mind. Each of them. Yes. I want to ask that we see the constitutional area of law, sir, like criminal law, constitutional law, they are being practiced most of the time in district courts and courts. So, sir, now since the new areas of law are also coming. So, for example, we see the case laws related to the import and export or the technology law. Sir, what are the clear prospects? And how can we uh, excel in those areas of law and how can we achieve this concept as an advocate? So that's a very good the, um, On the one stand in the high court, Supreme Court, or let's say the various criminals, if we have interest in them, so what should we do? Yes, that's a very good question that you put. In fact, this is called the first mover advantage. Okay, positive and negative, don't know I'll take a minute and explain the positive and the negative. So for example, Anuj, who will speak to you, is now focusing his career on building mediation as a, as, a, as a concept. And when he talks to you, you will realize that today, everyone will say, what do you do mediation? We are wasting your time. You know, come to do real, real legal work. But believe me, that Anuj will be laughing all the way to the bank in the next five years. Because in India, the most lucrative career will be a mediation lawyer. And those who are first movers in this are the ones who are going to rake in the real mullah. So he has identified in advance. So it is for you to identify in advance. Sonal has identified in 1996 that there will be a need for services to deal with har sexual harassment and harassment related issues. So today she is the national leader in providing this kind of legal services. So it is for you to identify in advance and link yourself with that. Now, what is the negative in that? The negative, as I said, is that the first mover, you may be like cyber law. Jo cyber law, cyber law, people used to laugh at the cyber law. Today, they are the ones, Bitcoin, Bitcoin and this kind of technology. So, technology is the future. In fact, 
प्लीज टेक इट फ्रॉम मी दैट वी मूव फ्रॉम नाइनटीन फोर्टीज में क्या लॉ था नाइनटीन फोर्टीज में वॉट वॉज इंपॉर्टेंट लेबर लॉ इंडस्ट्रियल लॉ Why? Because the nature of what was driving the workforce was physical and industrial force. That's why labor was very important. You keep seeing related to while I am saying, think of Hollywood movies. What were the Hollywood movies then? Mother India. Okay. Then you had Kala Pathar and all those things. Then slowly, slowly the 90s came, and Hollywood became Karan Johar. Kuch kuch hota hai. and law transformed slowly from that it became intellectual property right even Am- amitabh bachchan is getting orders ipr order ki mera nakal mat kar right now slowly slowly as now you have this rudraksh i have seen it but for the purpose of lecture i know that is all about high tech and technology and all right hollywood bhi change kar raha hai technology dekh rahe hai mission impossible brahmastra ha brahmastra brahmastra sorry brahmastra brahmastra AI, artificial intelligence is the future. How do you deal with AI? What kind of laws are laws till now are understood for human beings? Now you have to deal with law of the future for non-human computers or intelligence, artificial intelligence. So if you have it in you to identify this as an area of law which is going to be the dominating law in the future, and you are willing to ex- to specialize in that, good for you. Now, how do you start in a law school? Start by reading up as much as you can about it. Start by publishing articles on that, so that as you as you are going, sell that as your SOP for that LLM course in Harvard or Stanford or wherever you want to go, and get your start your career right now on that niche law which you are identifying you want to do. But लगे रहना होगा, and that's what I'm counseling all of you. You need patience. You have to be more patient. Just last question after this. Sir, I am Gobind from Fourth Year. Sir, you are what? I am Gobind from Fourth Year. Okay. Yes, Gobind. Sir, my question is, uh, how to be part of the cliche which is being followed in the law profession? My second question is, how politics impact the legal process? लंच के पहले ऐसा भारी वर्कल प्रश्न तो अलाउड नहीं है, हाँ? उसके लिए तो हमें और एक वर्कशॉप करना होगा पॉलिटिक्स एंड लॉ। लॉ इज़ ऑल अबाउट पॉलिटिक्स। In fact, let me tell you, someone asked about judicial appointments. Never go by the public posturing that you see. Don't go. And today, तुम रखो जो social media and uh, 24/7 uh, news. Public posturing becomes so important. Today you have live law and you have uh, bar and bench live tweeting what is happening. And the judges, so we were just did our when the retired Supreme Court judge was saying that it's so difficult now with live tweeting because we often ask questions just to elicit opinion. There's a moot court where judges push there. To tell ke dekhne ke liye ki Roman ko pata hai ya nahi pata hai alternate position. But aaj ke din mein wo judge push lega immediately live tweet ho jayega. Justice so and so says this this how can you wear a hijab? बस हो गया तो एंटी हिजाब पीपल विल गो देयर प्रो हिजाब पीपल विल गो देयर वो जज विल यू विल स्टार्ट ट्रोलिंग द पुअर जज लाइक नोबडीज बिजनेस सो आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम पॉलिटिकल आइडियल यस आई एम आई एम कमिंग टू दैट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट पॉलिटिक्स सो डोंट गो बाय व्हाट इज पब्लिकली पेड आउट बिकॉज़ लेट मी टेल यू दैट वेदर द कोलेजियम केम और द कोलेजियम डिड नॉट कम इन इंडिया नॉट अ सिंगल ज्यूडिशियल अपॉइंटमेंट कैन हैपन अनलेस अनलेस इट हैज अ ब्लेसिंग ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट Not a single judicial appointment can happen, but for public consumption we have police here, more, here, more. Who, 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 Is the art of perception. You are shown that there is a war. You are shown there is an independent process. I would urge you, as law students, today we live in a country which has sacrificed its nuance, and that is the greatest tragedy of our times. We come from a country 